What's the most dangerous spider you can think of? Most spider bites aren't very serious, but in my years studying these arachnids in the wild, there are three spiders that stand out as the most venomous on earth. From a bite that turns your nervous system off like a light switch, to a venom that melts your organs, these spiders are gnarly. It sparked a whole debate about which one is truly the most venomous of them all. And the first and most famous of the big three is found in the coastal regions of Eastern Australia. For the most part, the funnel webs are a secretive group of spiders, hiding deep inside their burrows, under rocks, under rotting logs, and sometimes even in hollow trees. And their funnel-shaped webs, as weird as they look, are perfectly engineered to catch all sorts of small insects. In terms of their lifestyle, they aren't really all that special compared to other megalomorphs, so it's kind of weird they ended up being so dangerous. But their venom is a potent neurotoxin. It attacks the channels that nerves use to send signals, effectively turning off the nervous system of its prey. The weird part is, though, those exact same receptors are found in the nervous systems of primates, just like humans. So while the funnel web venom is not dangerous to things like cats and dogs, it can actually be seriously dangerous to human physiology. The wandering males, the funnel web spiders that you are most likely to come across, have a venom five times as toxic as that of the females, which tend to stay hidden in their burrows. The males are also reported to have a much worse attitude. And considering many of these species are found right in the metropolitan areas of southeastern Australia, the most populous parts of the country, people come across these spiders a lot. And when you have a grumpy spider with a toxic venom that is coming across people on a regular basis, that is the perfect recipe for a lot of serious bites. Heading over to the other side of the planet, we have the second most infamous spider in the entire world, the Brazilian wandering spiders. But that name's a little bit misleading. They're not just found in Brazil. The genus Phonutria actually is found throughout much of Central and South America. And these spiders get their name from their nomadic, active hunting style. These are massive spiders, and they are patrolling through the understory of the rainforests they call home, looking for basically anything they can overpower. These spiders are typically hunting insects, things like katydids, grasshoppers, praying mantises. But what's crazy is a study actually showed that in the neotropics, the wandering spiders love to eat frogs. In fact, frogs were eaten more often by wandering spiders than any other predator, which means they have venom that can attack vertebrate systems as well as invertebrates. Like the funnel webs, the wandering spider has a neurotoxic venom. It's attacking the central nervous system of the things that it's biting. But the way this venom works is different. It has the inhibitory venom like the funnel web, the components that turn off your nervous system. In serious bites, this can lead to paralysis of the diaphragm, the muscle that you use to breathe, and um, I don't know about you, but if, if I can't breathe, I, I, I can't survive very long. But the wandering spider also has excitatory components, things that overexcite your nerves, causing them to send extra rapid signals. This leads to immense amounts of pain. And in men, it leads to a delightful thing called priapism. I don't want to get demonetized by describing what that is, but if you'd like to Google it, you're in for a treat. These spiders are also reported to have a very very nasty attitude, but in all of my work with these spiders in the field, I have never actually even seen one threat pose in the wild. We've all seen those viral videos of Brazilian wandering spiders standing up, showing those legs, baring their fangs, looking like some sort of rabid beast, but I'd have to imagine that they're really only going to do that display if they're absolutely cornered. These spiders are extremely fast, but they're extremely fast to flee and try to find safety. They're skittish, much more intelligent, calculated spiders, and bites really only happen when you're sticking your hand into a place where one of these spiders is actually hiding. This one's probably the least well-known of the three. The six-eyed sand spiders belong to the genus Sicarius in the arid coastal regions of Central and South America, and the genus Hexophthema found in arid regions of Southern Africa. These spiders are actually the closest relatives of the brown recluses and are some of the most extreme arachnids in the world. These spiders live in some of the most remote deserts on the planet and are famous for the way they cover themselves in sand to wait for prey to walk across them. The reason most people haven't heard of them is because 
they really don't come across people all that often at all. You have to really go out of your way to encounter these spiders and they are extremely, extremely reluctant to bite. So our data isn't super great on what they can actually do to you. Our best knowledge comes from analysis of their venom. Like the recluse spiders, they have a very necrotic toxin in their venom. This toxin is called phospholipase D, and it's what's known as a cytotoxin. Most spiders tend to have a neurotoxic venom, something that attacks the nerves of their prey. But the venom of the sand spider actively destroys their cells. You might remember the concept of a phospholipid bilayer from high school biology, which is a very fancy term for the membrane that encloses all of the cells in your body. Phospholipase is an enzyme that breaks down that membrane. All of the cells in your body have that phospholipid bilayer, and the phospholipase cytotoxin doesn't really discriminate on which cells that it destroys. So you can kind of see the problem if you're bitten by this spider. You can expect to see horrific necrotic lesions around the bite site from a six-eyed sand spider. But what's even worse is if the venom gets in your bloodstream and spread throughout your body, it can actually eat away at your internal organs. As destroyed bits of blood cells start to gum up your organs and that venom eats away at tissues, instead of paralysis and unconsciousness like we see with the funnel webs and wandering spiders, the sand spider will cause very painful multi-system organ failure in a matter of hours after a bite. But the likelihood of receiving a bite is very, very low. The arid climates that these animals live in mean that they have to conserve their venom. And these spiders are about as rugged of a survivor as it gets. The six-eyed sand spider has been documented going over a year without food or water, and apparently they're just fine doing that. But when these spiders are living in such remote, challenging habitats that they have to go so long without eating, the last thing they wanna do is waste that precious venom on something that isn't food. So if you're bitten by a six-eyed sand spider, you pretty much have to be doing something very, very wrong. These three spiders all have very scary bites and very gnarly venoms, but I see it in the comments all the time. When I make a video about the Brazilian wandering spider, I get tons of comments saying, no, the Sydney funnel web is worse. When I make a video about the Sydney funnel web, I get lots of comments saying, no, the Brazilian wandering spider is worse. And while a lot fewer people know about six-eyed sand spiders, on both of those videos, I got a handful of comments saying, no, the six-eyed sand spider is in fact the most venomous in the world. So which is it? Part of the reason I wanted to make this video was to finally put the debate to bed of who the most venomous spider in the world actually is. So we actually have to have some kind of scientific method to prove which one is actually the worst. And it turns out we actually have one. In the world of snakes, there really isn't much debate on what the most venomous snake is. And the metric that people are using to crown the king of venomous snakes is venom potency. The most recent data we have is that the inland taipan is actually the most potent venom of not just all snakes, but all reptiles. Which is crazy because, as far as we know, the inland taipan has never killed anyone in the wild. So there's no debate that the inland taipan is the most venomous snake in the world, but it's not the deadliest. The deadliest snakes come from Asia. Cobras, banded crates, saw-scaled vipers, Russell's vipers. These snakes kill thousands of people every year. And they are all highly venomous, but they're not typically ranked as the most venomous snake in the world. So just because a venomous animal kills more people does not necessarily mean that its venom is the most potent. If we look at insects, this is also true. The most venomous insect in the world is the Maricopa harvester ant. Once again, earning that title based on venom potency not human kills. In fact, as far as we know, Maricopa harvester ants haven't killed anyone. Whereas things like mosquitoes and kissing bugs kill thousands and thousands of people every single year. When it comes to snakes and insects, there really is no confusion. The insect or snake with the most potent venom is the one that is the world's most venomous. So my question is, why isn't that logic being applied to spiders? We measure the potency of venom with a metric called LD50, which means median lethal dose. The lower the LD50 score, the less venom it takes to kill something, meaning the more potent the venom. Smaller LD50, more toxic venom. So let's look at the LD50 scores of 
the big three spiders, the funnel web, the wandering spider, and the sand spider. The funnel web is known to be more toxic to primates. However, we actually do have an LD50 score for primates. It's 0.2. The human specific lethal dose is not known, but due to our similarities to other primates, we would expect it to be in the ballpark of that same number. 0.2 is fairly toxic. It's 10 times as potent as a rattlesnake, and it's more toxic than even the most potent of the widow spiders. Given that these funnel web spiders are also very large and can inject a large amount of venom in a bite, yes, we would expect the bite of the funnel web to be quite bad for a human. However, when it comes to venom potency, the funnel webs really don't hold a candle to the other two spiders on this list. Yes, there are 36 species of funnel web. Yes, there was that new big boy species described out of Newcastle, but these spiders being so closely related to each other, we would expect their venom potency to be in that same ballpark of 0.2, and the wandering spiders just blow them out of the water. Unlike the funnel webs, where the males are more toxic than females, female wandering spiders are the more potent of their kind. With an LD50 score of 0.2, 0.6 micrograms per kilogram. Now you're probably like, well, Spencer, 0.6 is larger than 0.2, and you'd be correct. But in the case of the wandering spider, units matter. The wandering spider venom is so potent, it has to be measured in micrograms, not milligrams. For those of you who don't know the metric system, a microgram is one one thousandth of a milligram. So even though it's 0.6 micrograms, it's actually 0.0006 milligrams per kilogram, almost 300 times as potent as the funnel web spider. The reason that wandering spiders aren't killing people as frequently as funnel webs is because they live in these remote rainforests in Central and South America. They're not encountering people as often. And I know lots of people are gonna flock to the comments getting really, really angry because no, I have it all wrong. The funnel web is more venomous. All of my sources for this information are linked in the description below. Knock yourself out. The scientific method doesn't care about your feelings. You notice I haven't actually touched on the sand spider yet. That was intentional. We don't actually have an LD50 score for the six-eyed sand spider. And part of that is because the way their venom acts is so weird and so different, it's hard to measure it in a lab test the same way we do their neurotoxic counterparts. But there is an argument to be made that they might be even more potent than the wandering spider. Where these neurotoxic venoms are relatively easy to treat if you seek medical attention, the cytotoxic venoms are not. We have antivenom for funnel webs and wandering spiders. They've tried to make antivenom for the recluse spiders and sand spiders, but clinical results were less than encouraging. We only have two suspected bites from six-eyed sand spiders. One patient lost their arm, the other patient died. And it seems like aside from amputating the limb that got bit, there really isn't much you can do if you're bitten by the six-eyed sand spider. That venom works fast, it moves through your system, destroying everything in its path. It is the only spider that I would say is basically a potential death sentence if you're bitten. Neurotoxic venoms, even if you don't have access to antivenom, there are other forms of life-saving care that will keep you alive while your body fights off the venom. With a six-eyed sand spider, you don't really have that luxury. The longer that venom is in your system, the more physical damage it's gonna do to your organs, tissues, and cells, and the less likely that you're going to survive. You're gonna basically just bleed out internally and have all your organs fail. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we have to stick to the tried and true method. Based on a measured LD50, the Brazilian wandering spider is without question the most venomous spider in the entire world. And I'm sorry to all the Australians in the comments, it's, it's not close either. These spider bites are super, super scary if you were to receive them. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that these spiders have these venoms because they've served them throughout their evolutionary history. These venoms are dangerous to us, but it's really more of a tool that they use to subdue their prey than it is a weapon to fight against things that are too big for them to eat. We are more dangerous to them than they can ever hope to be towards us. And even with the scary funnel webs, if we give them their space, they'll give us ours. The world of venomous creatures is super, super fascinating, and it doesn't stop at spiders either. Venomous snakes have a wealth of biological secrets, and here in my home country of the United States, we have a wide array of amazing venomous snakes. If you wanna learn about the most venomous snakes in the US, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.